And now I have the pleasure of introducing today's webcast. Thank you everyone for joining How to Boost Profitability Overnight by Controlling Company Food Spend. Today's webcast is brought to us by Grubhub. Grubhub delivers great taste to every workplace, connecting you and your team to delicious meals from your favorite local restaurants. Grubhub for Work is part of Grubhub, the nation's leading takeout and delivery marketplace. Grubhub's platform allows over 5,000 companies to place food orders and manage expenses simply and powerfully and to enjoy great food from some thousands of restaurants in their network. And now I have the pleasure of introducing today's presenter, Elizabeth Wilsterman, Senior Corporate Sales Executive, Grubhub for Work. Liz Wilsterman is a Senior Corporate Sales Executive at Grubhub for Work. In this role, she works with top law firms across the country to launch corporate food programs that boost profitability and operational efficiency. With six years of experience in consultative software sales, Liz is passionate about helping business owners with smarter through work smarter through technology. Liz, it's all on you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Liz Wilsterman, um, and I'm a senior account executive here at Grubhub. Thanks so much for joining the webinar this afternoon, and I'm very excited to walk you through how to boost profitability overnight by controlling company food spend in the office. Today, I'll be giving you an overview of who Grubhub is and how we work with companies to streamline food ordering in the office. I'll then walk you through how to gain a holistic view of your company's food spend. From there, I'll show you how to uncover and identify hidden food costs at your firm. And finally, I will detail strategies on how to gain control of that waste and ultimately gain profitability. Before we dive in about how to boost profitability in the office, I want to give you a little background on myself and my company. I've been working at Seamless for three years, and I've worked with hundreds of companies in order to streamline their food ordering from the front end, and more importantly, focus on the expense management portion, which ultimately increases their profitability. I'm very excited to be having this conversation with this particular group, as the true core of Seamless and Grubhub started in your industry, the legal industry. If we go back to 1999, our company was just Seamless. It was founded by two young lawyers who were working late. They were associates who, associates who worked very long days, and they were staying late and even later to expense their dinner. As they were looking through old menu books and outdated phone numbers while trying to remember what client matter number they were working on, they thought there must be a better way to do this in a more streamlined fashion. They realized they weren't the only firm that had profitability problems, and they, they weren't the only firm that had trouble billing back to clients accurately and that's how Seamless was founded. They created an online platform to do just that, streamline the front end ordering and consolidate everything on the back end. And that's what was Seamless. Fast forward, we merged with Grubhub and had a similar mission, but for consumers, not businesses. So we merged to be the nation's largest online ordering platform for food. And now we have 9,000 corporate clients, 75,000 restaurants, and the Seamless and Grubhub for Work platform are helping to streamline food ordering and billing every day for businesses just like yours. So as we just discussed, our company was started because of this very tenant, that offices, especially law firms, are as well fed as they are hardworking. So as I'm sure this group is familiar with, there is tons of food ordering coming into the office. If you think about your day-to-day, -day, there is catering for client meetings, overtime meals, dinners, catering for when partners come into town. All of this food that's coming into the office is actually much more expensive for the company than just the cost of that lovely bagel platter. Because if we break down your catered client lunch, the cost of that lunch will far exceed the food. And I'll walk you through the ways to identify that and the ways to eliminate it. So let's start off here. Here are some questions that you want to ask yourself when considering the hidden cost of food. These are all the questions that I ask my clients when we're working together, 
and they are all surprised that we uncover significant hidden costs associated with what once seems like a straightforward task and expense. So let's run through these questions. How often does your office order food, and for how many employees? Who is allowed to order food and expense it? Do you have a meal policy? Is it even enforced? How often do employees overspend by a few dollars? How often is there extra food at your office? How much time does your staff spend catering their, uh, creating their expense reports? How much time is spent coding invoices with your billing information? Is it worth your accounting team's time and pay to track down one to two dollars from an employee who overspent for lunch? Who covers the overage if not? Surprise! Chances are, based on those questions, you have hidden costs of food. And so I'm here to educate you on what those hidden costs encompass. So hidden cost number one, you don't realize how much you're spending. As we sit here in the room together, I think that we can all agree that each one of you work for law firms, not food ordering firms. Therefore, you probably don't take too much time to think about how much the office is spending on food and what this means for the company's bottom line. When I sit with CFOs and when I ask the question, how much does your office spend on food? They don't know the answer to that question. That number is often in the six figures, but with no visibility into that number or how it's allocated across the company even, they don't even know if it's within, even within company policy. So the first step to boosting profitability and eliminating the hidden costs is to uncover what those costs are. Having a system that can provide transparency to spend and enforce company policies will allow you to take control of that number. To paint that picture, let's just walk through some scenarios that I'm sure everyone in this room has experienced. Does your marketing team order bagels for their team every Friday morning? Managing partners, executives, assistants order lunch for the executive team for their standing Monday meeting. Can attorneys stay late, order food, expense their meals? The sales manager decides to order catered lunch for a client meeting. Meals are ordered from different restaurants. All these restaurants have different payment terms. Tips vary. I would wager that the answer to most, if not all of those questions is yes. So the goal would be to have visibility into the food spend and to make more strategic decisions about maximizing those dollars. For example, those attorneys staying late, how do we ensure that they spend only the $25 allotted? That office manager that's ordering pastries for the client meeting, how do we ensure it's getting billed back to the client accurately and in a timely man manner? The next hidden cost is the time it takes to process invoices and expense reports. It's often more than the food. So let's go back to those 10 attorneys working late. When they work late, the firm ends up paying for more than just their chicken parm. If you look deeper into the process surrounding ordering food, in both the ordering experience and in the billing experience, there are multiple people who are involved in just this one dinner. Think about the full life cycle of this process. For example, John is an attorney, he's working late. It's 7 p.m., he knows he's gonna be working late. He knows that the rule is that if he works past eight, he thinks he's allowed to order dinner. 7.30 rolls around, he starts to think about where to order from. Katie told him about that deli downstairs. You know, he wonders if CPK is open, does Pop Belly deliver this late? After more than just a few minutes of deciding where he wants to order from, John calls Subway, orders a foot long. His sandwich comes, he eats it, he finishes working throughout the night. Now fast forward three weeks. It's time for John to process his expense report. John opens up his top drawer, overflowing with paper receipts and 
He spends the rest of his afternoon trying to remember what client he was working on on February 3rd and what the proper matter number is. When he's finally done, he submits his coded Excel sheet along with all of his scanned receipts to his accounts payable team, who then reviews each individual line item in order to ensure that his meal was not over budget and that he had coded the correct client matter. At this point, not only has a month passed and John's firm still hasn't billed back his meals to the client, but his accounts payable team has to go back and forth with John multiple times to ensure accurate information and to ask him to pay the excess dollar amount that he spent on his dinner multiple times. Now I just talked five minutes about one foot long sub. Imagine how long this process actually takes for food orders to be processed and how many times that is repeated throughout the firm for both meals and catering. So to quantify how much that sub actually costs, once we take a look, once we take into account not only the food, but the time it takes and the amount of people it touches in order to get the expense processed, we are looking at around $100 for just one individual dinner. That's $100 for just one person's dinner. So the hidden cost number three, employees sticking to the budget. Meal budgets are critically important to the office for controlling costs, especially when the attorneys are working overtime. Various budget groups, employees may be asked to absorb costs for budget overages, but does that actually happen? Every dollar adds up, and we all know that. The honor system is not realistic, but neither is manually combing through hundreds, if not thousands, of expense reports. Hidden cost number four, budgets aren't enforced. So let's go back to John. For his dinner, he was supposed to spend $25. Once he added the extra pickles and a bag of chips, his cost came to $26.50. Thinking that it was just an extra $1.50, he submitted the expense report anyways. Accounts payable accepted the line item because they figured it was such a small amount over the policy. Wouldn't it be more simple if John's budget was preloaded on the account and he could get as many bags of chips as he wanted by putting anything over $25 onto his personal credit card on the checkout page? That's a win-win. John gets what he wants for dinner and he's happy, and the firm only pays the exact amount that they budget, so they're happy. Hidden cost number five, absorbing client meal costs. In thinking about profitability, the most impactful way to boost profitability is to have less items appear on your balance sheet. If your firm originally budgeted to bill out all food expenses associated with clients and is now having to absorb these costs, those are direct hits at the bottom line, therefore significantly reducing profitability. So why go digital? How can you know there's a problem if you can't see the problem? If we take a minute and review all the hidden costs we just outlined, not realizing how much you're spending, the time it takes to process invoices and expense reports, employees sticking to the budget, enforcing budgets, and absorbing all the costs to build the meals. It's evident that food is costing your firm much more than just that bagels on a Friday or tacos on a Wednesday night. If we look at it holistically, it becomes clear that the solutions to decreasing some of these costs lie in the ability to control the food spend by implementing budgets and providing transparency into spend. Going digital will immediately boost profitability and cut costs. First, understanding your company's food spend through reporting will allow you not only to easily slice and dice that food spend data, but it will also allow for real-time reporting, which in turn will allow you to bill back to clients almost immediately. 
The second way to boost profitability is to make sure that food spend stays within the allocated amount originally budgeted. In other words, it's making sure that John only expenses the $25 that he was allotted for dinner and that he pays the rest on his own. This way, the company doesn't have to absorb the extra, say, $1.50 that he goes over. By going digital and applying rules and restrictions at the point of sale, it guarantees that no one will spend outside of the policy and that the, food firm spend, that the firm's food spend will be exactly what they budgeted for. So lastly, how can Grubhub for Work help? Grubhub for Work is here to help you in your quest to boost profitability. We give you access to hundreds of restaurants and caterers with one perfectly coded invoice at the end of the month. The Grubhub for Work corporate account acts as one giant house account. It guarantees that all orders adhere to your company's food policy by applying rules and restrictions and eliminates the need for expense reports through matter number capture right on the checkout page. By saving time on the front end from a streamlined ordering experience and on the back end by increasing transparency into spend via reporting, the Grub Up for Work account will help you boost your profitability through both hard and soft dollar savings. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope that you're able to implement some of these cost-saving measures to boost profitability at your own firm. As you work through the process, please note that Grub Up for Work is available across the country, and don't hesitate to reach out to discuss how to customize an account for your firm. Thank you so much. Oh, all right, Liz, that was great. So does anyone have any questions? If you have any questions for Liz, please chat those to all participants, or you can chat those to all panelists. So Liz, I do have a quick question for you real quick. So is it imperative that we save all of the receipts? Uh, right now, the caterers typically bring a copy every time they deliver. Would this allow us to to have receipts per order, or is it one lump sum? Yeah, that's a great question. So while you'll only have one invoice at the end of the month, that invoice will individually break out each line item for every order that's been placed for that time period. So there's no need to save receipts anymore. You can actually go back and view the total receipt for any order that you've placed on the account, and also from any user that's placed an order on the account. Okay, great, fantastic. So Andrea has a question. She wants to know if Grub, Grubhub bill, can bill us weekly rather than monthly. Yes, absolutely, that's a great question. So yes, we can customize the account for each individual firm kind of based on what works best for their account payable team. So um, you know, we have a lot of customization in terms of the frequency of the billing. Um, and you can rep run reports in real time. Um, so you know, if it's for billing back, you don't even need to wait um, you know, for, for the invoice to post. You can pull a report in real time to slice and dice that data. All right, great. And uh, Barbara states that uh, they currently use Seamless, and uh, she just wants to know, how do we set a budget? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I'm glad that she's enjoying the Seamless service already. Um, the budgets are um, something that you can set up on the corporate account. So um, again, you know, each account, um, each corporate account is customized based on the, the company that's using it, um, and so we would preset those those budgets, um, and then they can be managed on a back-end admin portal on the corporate account. All right, great. And uh, here's one from Elaine. She states that uh, when they place an order, is there a place for them to add comments as to the purpose of the order, as opposed to just knowing the GL number? Also, just there's a two parts to this. Also, are the delivery charges based on each person, or if they're ordering several sandwiches, is there just one delivery fee? 
Okay, great. So um, I'll hit the, the delivery fee question first. So, um, you know, it's just one delivery fee uh, per order, So, but they can order as a group as well. So there's a lot of functionality for multiple employees to be, um, you know, each putting in their own sandwich to an order. Um, and in that sense, they would just have one delivery uh, person. In terms of the question about the comments box, yes, absolutely. So we can have um, a matter number box where they would be required to put in that matter number, as well as we can make it re required to put in um, a comment. So uh, again, every checkout page can be customized to have the language that your office would like. Um, and so you can have that cost that comments box say, you know, reason for order, names of attendees, um, the language can be customized again for whatever the needs are of your office. Um, so there is opportunity to capture just more than one piece of information. All right, great. So the next one, I think we uh, may have answered part of it, which is, is there a delivery fee for each individual order, or is it per month or per year flat fee for all deliveries? I guess maybe the second part of that. Okay, so there is um, a $9.99 delivery fee per order, um, and that's, so that's just on a per order basis. All right. And then we've got one that states we need real-time costing, delivery fees, monthly fixed fee, We don't charge um, a monthly minimum on the account. We don't have a, you know, minimum spend or anything like that. Um, the only cost to have the account is a transaction fee, um, and so that's, you know, something that we can chat about in, uh, you know, further conversations with anyone that's interested in hearing more about that. Okay, and the contact information is on the left of your screen, and I'll, I'll also chat it out in just a moment. So we've got another seamless corporate account question. So currently my firm has a seamless corporate account. Do I, need to, do I now need to start a Grubhub for work account? Nope, absolutely not. Um, you can still use the seamless corporate account. Um, some of the difference in branding is just based on um, where your office is located. So, um, you know, the seamless corporate account has the same features. So we're happy that you're enjoying it. And um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email us or call into seamless and, um, you know, we can, we can get any questions answered on your current account if need be. Okay, great. So here's one from Arthur stating, I'm less concerned about individual meals, but more concerned about catering, where groups are ordering food for administrative meetings. How does Grubhub work with that kind of need? Yes, so we work with uh, hundreds of caterers, and you'll see not only restaurant menus on the um, Grubhub for Work platform, but also catering menus. So, you know, any of your meetings that you need a platter of sandwiches or a spread of fruit or even coffee service, um, you're, you are absolutely able to order that from the Grubhub for Work account. And the other thing is that we also have technology that allows for um, you know, meetings for people to be able to order as a group, and everyone would select what they wanted from a menu. And we call that a group order. So that's sometimes, you know, a little bit of a fun alternative to catering where people can, you know, choose exactly what it is that they would like. Um, but either of those options are both included on the Grubhub for Work account. Okay, great. So here's a question in reference to time. So Beth states that, you know, she finds that most places say the earliest delivery time is noon, and they start most of their meetings at 1130. Are there plans to have the ability to deliver at 11? Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, Again, we can we would be happy to talk to this person offline and see what their options would be. But the great thing about the Grubhub for Work account is that you can actually order as far in advance as you'd like. So um, usually this will help with this issue. And um, you know, I think that it's it, it is pretty standard that there should be a significant amount of uh, restaurants and caterers that will be able to uh, order for those earlier meetings. And again, that's something that we you know we would love to chat about. So if um, the person who asked that question wanted to, to reach out to us, um, you know, you can definitely do so because we do have a lot of caterers that are able to provide, you know, breakfast spreads and bring them early in the morning. So um, it's definitely part of, part of our wheelhouse and what we do often. 
Okay, great. So Jane's got a couple of questions. She says, um, we do not pay when food is delivered. Grubhub pays and then we reimburse Grubhub. It's kind of a question. Or are there invoices for each vendor we order from? And then she also has a question, is there a fee from Grubhub that is associated with using this service? So every order that has been placed on the account, both restaurants and meals, is funneled onto one invoice that's paid uh, once a month. So you're not paying for each order at the point of sale, you're just paying, you know, again, once a month. Um, and in that sense, yes, we are, you know, extending line of credit with your office. Um, and again, this is to help that process of the streamlined billing um, and kind of consolidating everything into one place. In terms of the uh, fee, we don't charge a fee at the point of sale. We just charge a transaction fee, um, and that's, you know, again, something it, it's not on a minimum or we don't have any minimum spend. We just charge a transaction fee based on the orders that you've placed. Okay, great, great. All right, so here's a question about the cost factors. So um, Arthur's stating one of your cost factors mentioned leftover food. How do we get a handle on the fact that for meetings, our people always over order? He's just looking for some guidance. Yeah, great. So, um, so you know, the, with the reporting features that we have that allow you to kind of dive deep into the ordering data at the office, um, you know, all sorts of reports can be pulled to see um, some ordering trends for the office and see maybe, you know, the times that there was way too much food or get, you know, all sorts of averages and um, Excel spreadsheets that you can download to see what your average spend is, maybe trying to lower it, maybe putting limits on how much those people who are uh, ordering the catering are allowed to spend. Um, and the other way that we can kind of eliminate that is what we were speaking to before as this group order process. So we find that often if people are, you know, choosing just what they want from the meal, you don't have a lot of, lefto a lot of leftovers um, because each person has kind of their own select portion. So um, again, you know, the, the total oversight into the, the reporting features is going to really help with that as well. All right, great. So we've got a couple of confirmation questions. So the first one is from Barbara. She just wants to confirm that the earliest delivery time is noon. You may want to talk about that just a little bit more. We just discussed it on the earlier question. Our standard hours are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So um, I do, you know, I'm not sure about that one situation. And again, I'm, we're happy to talk about it offline um, if need be. but. In general, it's uh, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, and again, we do, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner very often. Okay, great. And then one more confirmation. Um, Elaine states that I hear you correctly that there is a 9.99 delivery charge per order, even if there's just one sandwich. And then she goes on to talk about the cost online is 2.99 to 6.99 but I assume that is for ad hoc ordering, not for someone who has a corporate account who gets one invoice for all charges. So for individual ordering, um, the, the delivery fee is going to be based on the restaurant. So if you were just ordering one sandwich, it would just be, you know, whatever, if the restaurant did decide to charge a delivery fee, that would be up to them. Um, for the for the Grubhub for Work corporate account, we provide white glove delivery service. So we have our own delivery team, and we bring the food to the office, um, and we deal with the whole uh, you know start to finish logistics with that because we do understand that there's sensitivity around you know food in the office, and, and it's a very important thing. So for those orders, um, those are a 9.99 delivery fee. Um, but again, you know for for catering orders and and um, group orders. You know that 9.99 delivery fee, um, you know, ends up being very minimal. All right, great. So Don wants to know where do we go to find out which restaurants are in the Grubhub system? Is the list updated regularly? 
so you can go to um, work.grubhub.com, and if you put in your address or zip code, it should show you what the available options would be. The other thing is that if you email uh, office orders at grubhub.com, which is on the slide right now, um, we can actually, you know, get a list for you and walk you through what your options would be. All right, great. Let's see if we have some more questions that are coming in. We've got plenty of time if anyone wants to um, post some questions out there. Liz is ready to respond to those. All right, let's see. So, Liz, some of, uh, we've got a question here that says, some of our partners shouldn't be restricted on how much they order. Will this restrict them to the associate's budget? Well, I love that question. So, absolutely not. Um, we have a lot of flexibility in how you can customize the account. So, um, we create what we call budget groups um, when we set up the account with you so that each level of employee can get kind of what is the company policy associated with their level. So, for example, you know, the C-suite executives shouldn't be getting a budget, and we realize that. So, um, you could give them unlimited access to the account so they can spend whatever they want and they would never get cut off. Maybe the, the managing directors, um, they can spend, they have a little bit more of a budget, they can spend up to $50, um, and maybe just the regular associates, they can only spend, you know, $25. So you can break it up, um, and you can get on as granular of a level as you'd like, so you could actually even tell us that all 50 employees at your, at your firm have different ordering budgets, and we would be happy to uh, accommodate that for you. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you customize the Account. All right, great. So kind of going back to setting up an account with Grubhub, is there a fee to open the Grubhub account? What do you need from um, the people here on the webcast right now to uh, open up an account? Great, so there's no fee to set up the account. Um, we actually create and customize each account for you. You know, like we were speaking to before, every firm operates differently and, um, you know, we want to be able to customize the account based on what your needs are. So um, if you'd like to get an account set up, we're happy to chat with you. Um, and again, emailing officeorders at grubhub.com um, and a representative will reach out to you and then start a conversation on, you know, what the ordering is like at your office and how we can customize the account for you. So, um, you know, again, it's, there is, you know, a little bit of a process just because we want to get to know you guys and get to know how uh, we can, you know, set up the account best for your needs. Okay, great, great. So um, another question about costs, I'm not sure if you want to go into detail on this one, if you just want to have them uh, give you a, uh, an email. What is the cost of the overall service, not counting delivery fee? Yeah, so not counting on the, you know, the cost of the food or the delivery fee, the only additional charge that we have is a transaction fee. So that's, uh, we just charge a small fee on the invoice at the end of the month, um, and that's the only additional fee that you'll see. Okay, great. So going back to fees again, another clarification. I'm not sure that the 999 um, answer was very clear to everyone. So just to clarify again, to utilize the corporate account features for even one sandwich, the delivery fee is 999. For a lesser fee, you would have to just order yourself. Yes, so um, if you did want to just order one thing and didn't want to pay that delivery fee, you know, you wouldn't get the white glove service, the, um, the billing features. So um, for just one sandwich or one individual's order, you could use the Grubhub personal account um, again, but that wouldn't be able to utilize all of the um, back-end transparency and billing features. Okay, and I think this question right here is probably related to that as well. It's just a little different. It states, I currently use Grubhub for work, and I believe there is a minimum amount for delivery. However, I run into small groups that need catering, and it won't hit the minimum amount. What should we do in this situation? And also, if my Grubhub rep is out, who should I contact in regards to my account? 
If you had questions about um, your account immediately, you know, we can absolutely help you right away with uh, emailing that office orders at grubhub.com email address. Um, so we're going to be uh, getting all the emails from that and we'll remember your question and we can set you up with somebody who can, um, you know, make an adjustment to your account. All right, great. We've got two questions in reference to service area. So the first one is, it doesn't appear this service is available in my area. Are there plans to expand in the metro Detroit area? And then the other is, I just passed it up. I just went to the website and it states that it does not service my zip code. Could this be correct? So both of those are pretty much kind of similar. You want to talk to that. Yes, so we are currently in um, over 20 markets right now, and the great news is, is that in Q2 and Q3, we are going to be um, tremendously expanding into other cities. So um, while you're at, your zip code may not be on there right now, um, we would appreciate your patience just for a couple of weeks, and um, we're going to be expanding rapidly um, in the next coming months. So that's something to be very excited about. Again, um, if you wanted to email us and you wanted to get kind of on a list for when we will be launching in your area, um, please email that office orders at grubhub.com and we'll be sure to notify you as soon as we're in your zip code. All right, great. So uh, what are the associated fees for ordering two daily delivery restaurant options for our employees? If they pay individually for their orders, does the company pay the delivery fee to sponsor that? So you do have the option to allow your employees to pay for their meals. Um, if, it's some, if you wanted to set up a order where they could, you know, select what they wanted from a menu, your office can choose whether um, the office pays for it or if people should be inputting their, their personal card uh, for the overages. Right. Um, you can choose, if you, oh, to follow up on that, okay. if you, you can choose to pay for the fees or have the employees pay for the fees. Got it. All right. We've got a couple of transaction fee questions. What is the transaction fee, a percentage of the overall invoice? If so, what is the percentage? And then the other is explain the transaction fee at the end of the month. Is it a percentage of the monthly amount? So pretty much the same thing. I'm going to talk about the transaction fees. So the, the transaction fee, um, it actually just varies based on how you use the account. So that's something that we would have, um, you know, a conversation with you offline on how we customize the account for you and kind of, you know, what what version of the account would best suit you. So, um, again, you know, email us so we can give you the best rate and um, we'll walk you through kind of how it all works. All right, good deal. Well, I've got one more question for you, and if anyone else has any other questions that they want to post in the chat, please do. But I'm going to ask this question. Our accounts payable team like to build back our clients ASAP. Do we have to wait for the monthly invoice to post to start this process? Great question. So, no, absolutely not. And that's one of the best features of the account is that your account payable team can pull a report in real time and um, see how much has been charged to each one of those matter numbers and slice the dice and dice the data anywhere else, you know, from there. So, um, a report can be pulled in real time from any time range and, um, you know, the account payable team can be billing back to clients, um, you know, day of the order if they want. All right, great. Well, I don't have any other questions. Do any of our attendees have any additional questions for Liz? If you do, you are more than welcome to send us a chat to all participants or all panelists. All right, well, Liz, I think we are going to go ahead and wrap this one up for today. Thank you so much for um, presenting to us. This was great. I know I've learned a lot, and I hope our attendees learned a lot as well. So we thank everyone for attending our, our presentation today. Did you want to say some last-minute comments, Liz? 
No, I appreciate everybody listening. And again, um, we're happy to have a conversation with anybody, no matter no matter the size of your company, no matter how much food you order in. Um, you know, we're we're more than willing to chat with you and kind of see how you can save a lot of money for your company. So um, again, anyone that wants to chat or just say hi, please email officeorders at grubhub.com. Thanks again. Great. Well, we thank you very much for your time, and we thank Grubhub. This actually concludes today's webcast. Thank you for attending. The recording will be available at legalmarketplace.alanet.org. We will send all registrants an email tomorrow with this link, and please visit our event calendar to sign up for future webcasts.